Hey there, everybody. I'm John Bender Waffles Aljets, and welcome to this speed development commentary. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured, you know what? Why not? Let's do one. This is on my most recent speed development. This is the Rocky Road Route speed development for Pokemon Essentials. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, got my, my intro stuff going on here. Yes, you can watch me over at twitch.tv slash benderwaffles. I play games and do maps and stuff. So this is using a, uh, a uh, tile set that I was actually developing for a game project that I've been working on for a few years, but I've decided to actually remake the tile set. So I might be giving this tile set away. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, now, whenever I make tile sets, it is worth noting that they are made up of tiles that other people have created. I just put in the work of modifying the tiles to fit sort of you know, what I want and to make sure that they all fit together and actually put them into the format that, uh, Pokemon essentials or RPG maker XP in this case can understand. So it's worth noting that I don't take credit. I don't claim that I made these tiles. I just put them into a tile set. Uh, I've had a few comments about that in the past. I don't, <laughs> I don't ever claim that I created the tiles. Uh, but anyways, uh, so I wanted to kind of just ease myself into, I haven't done a speed development in a while. And so I decided, you know what? I do a lot of like wooded areas. Let's just kind of jump into that, but let's try to do something that fits into the game freak style, but also is a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more uh, interesting, a little bit less blocky than they tend to do. So I wanted to try something a little bit with the trees. And I was also a little bit limited by the tile set itself, just the way that the tile set is crafted. I can't do as much stacking of trees. Um, so I had to, I had to get, uh, kind of creative with what I was creating here. So I like this idea and something that I talk about a lot in a lot of my tutorials. And I talk about in speed development commentaries is the use of different elevation to really like make your areas seem a little bit more interesting than just a flat sort of wooded area. There's a time and place for, for having more flat areas, but I think that the more often that you can use elevation to your advantage, the better overall your maps are going to be. And so I really wanted to just go all out with this one. This one is like you're moving through a mountain pass or something. So it's a lot of different varying levels. Um, and I think that this, honestly, I think this might be one of my better maps that I've made pretty much ever. I love this map. I think that it looks spectacular. And I like the little added details such as that body of water there with the, you know, cracked and sunken down bit of log. I think that that just is a nice little detail for people. Um, it's something that is going to make your map memorable. When you're making maps, that's one thing you have to constantly be thinking about. You have to be thinking about what is going to make people remember this area from your game. Because you don't want your areas to be something that people just go through and then they never think about again. You want your players to like, you know, when they're talking to their friends about playing the game, you want them to be able to go, oh, did you, do you remember like Route 202 or whatever? you know, where over there, where I found like a Merrill or whatever, you want them to be able to describe the area to their friends and their friends to know exactly what it is that they're talking about. Um, so just having these little landmarks and these little details that just make your map feel just a little bit more unique from everything else that's going on. Now, one thing that a lot of people talk about with me and say that I do too much is I worry too much about what's outside of the bounds of what the player can play and really what's outside of the bounds of what the player can see, uh, within Pokemon essentials, I believe it's four, four tiles or is it eight tiles? It might be eight tiles. It's four trees, roughly of viewable distance away from the player. Um, so if the player can't go past here, they're only going to be able to see to about here ish. So really, I don't necessarily have to worry about all of this space, but to me, it's worth noting that when I'm doing these speed developments, a lot of times I'm making maps that aren't actually going to be played by players. Um, these aren't maps that you're ever going to really get the chance to run around in. These maps are being made specifically to be looked at by an audience. So 
in that case, I kind of do have to take into consideration what all everyone can see. Um, again, when you're making an actual map, you can get away with some shortcuts. You can get away with not having, not filling in areas that you know your player isn't going to ever be able to see. As I'm sitting here, you know, as I said, I'm working on this for an audience. I have to be cognizant of those things. So that's why I do that. Um, I've had people in the comments ask about it and say stuff about it and be like, you don't have to do that. I know I don't, but it, you know, you guys are going to see it. And when I'm making these maps for these videos, that's the part that I'm worrying about. Not necessarily what a player would see. So we're going through here. We're just filling in some trees, just filling in space. Now I don't, I don't particularly like the way that this tile set handles stacking trees. I don't think that these look good stacked like this. If I was making this in an actual game with this tile set, I would probably, I'd probably vary up the trees a little bit more. I wouldn't stack them like this, but it, it sort of worked for what I was doing here. I was on a bit of a time crunch. It was really, really like late at night and I was kind of just trying to get a video done. Um, otherwise I would have taken some more time to have like varied tree patterns and stuff just to sort of make it look a little bit better. That's the one weak part about this map that I feel. Um, but outside of that, again, it's outside of the quote unquote playable area. So I'm really not concerned. Um, which I know that contradicts what I just said, but yeah. Uh, here I was playing with grass. If you notice, let's go back a second. If you notice, I tried using the tall grass and here's the thing I've used. I include tall grass on most tile sets that I make for Pokemon fan games. I don't think I've ever actually used it. Like I just don't like the way that it looks most of the time. Um, I understand that there's a, there's a time and a place to use it from a gameplay perspective, but again, I just, I don't think that it looks good. So I tried to use it here. I put it down and it just looks like just a patch of green garbage. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to use regular grass. This to me just, it, it has, I like the texture of it a little bit better and it feels a little bit more, um, classic Pokemon. If that has any, if that makes any sense, I understand that this specific tile for grass doesn't necessarily scream that I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this grass tile. Um, but I think that it works with everything else that's going on with the trees and the bushes and everything. Um, but I just like that better than tall grass. I just think it looks better. And one thing that you're doing when you're placing down grass, you can place it down in big blocks, but it's, it's a smart idea to go through and kind of break it up. And what this does is a couple of things. One, it gives your player as they're trying to move through the grass, if they're trying to move through grass and not get a ton of encounters, what they can do is they can look at the grass and they can kind of plot out. Okay. If I go through, you know, this third line, I have to go through, you know, eight grass blocks. But if I go through the second line, I only have to go through five. So they're able to, you know, kind of strategically think like, what's the easiest way that I can get through this grass. And it just gives them some places where they can breathe. And on top of that, it just looks a little bit more natural because in these, in these, you know, Pokemon routes and stuff, when you just have these big blocks of grass, like it just doesn't look super natural. Like, yes, I understand that like fields are going to be one giant block, but it's worth noting that when you have a field of something like, Hey, that's a man-made structure more often than not. That is something where man has planted that grass in nature. You're going to see things are going to be a lot more patchy and things aren't going to be perfectly uniformly filled in. So when you're doing kind of a more natural route, or in this case where it's a route that maybe it was something that used to be really well maintained, you know, you've got all these different roads and stuff, you know, it's something where man has been through here, but nature has started to reclaim it. Um, just kind of breaking things up and making things a little bit more patchy, just feels a lot more realistic and gives it a much more uh sort of just dynamic texture to it i really i really dig that a lot 
and now we're, we're laying in all your different flowers. This is just, this is another thing that makes it feel a little bit more realistic. It's breaking up just this big patch of green, which is really just what this, this map is. It's a giant blob of green, but you're throwing in your blues, your whites, your yellows, your purples, whatever other colors of flowers that you have. And I'm doing the same in a little bit here. I dropped down some mushrooms and with that, it's just another thing to kind of just break it up and make it feel a little bit less monotonous. If that makes any sense at all. And then as we're coming through, we come to the final look at the map. As I said, I'm super proud of this map. I think that it's one of the better ones that I've ever made, especially in the Pokemon style. A lot of that has to do with the tile set. I do like the tile set, but I, I think I want to go a different direction with my fan game. Uh, but you know, I just, I think that overall the layout of the map, everything, it's really, it's a quick map. If the player was running through this, the player would probably spend, you know, unless they were specifically grinding or something, a player would make their way through this map in less than 30 seconds. Like they would just blast through this map. And sometimes you're going to have routes like that. You're going to have areas like that where the player is not going to spend very much time. And you might spend like an hour designing the map. You might spend two or three hours even designing the map. Your player is just going to blast through it. But when they do decide to take that time, they decide to spend that little brief amount of time grinding in the area, or if they're just kind of exploring, looking for secrets, they're going to appreciate the little details and the little things that you put into it to really like, you know, sell the realism of the world as it were, and to just make it a memorable area. But I want to know what you thought about this map. If you enjoyed it, uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see me make a specific type of map, be sure to let me know down there and maybe I'll get around to it. Thanks for watching and have a good one.